Polly's heart started pounding in fear. She said to herself, If Obina is Frank, who had killed my sister, it only means that I am carrying the child of the brother of the one who killed my sister. Once upon a time, in the village of Amazo, there lived a widow named Daluchi. Daluchi had two beautiful twin teenagers called Unkoli and Efunanya. Unkoli was the older while Efunanya was the younger twin. They both lived with their mother, Daluchi. Daluchi had done her best to train her two girls ever since their father died. She worked so hard to provide for her girls and she made sure they lacked nothing. One morning, on a Christmas holiday, Ifunanya had left for the stream to fetch water as usual. But on her way to the stream, she met a handsome boy named Frank. Frank was a young man who came from the city. He was not known in the village. He was a total stranger at Amaz village. Ifunanya, on seeing and meeting him, fell in love with him. She came home and she told her sister Ankole about the city boy, Frank, who she had fallen in love with. But Ankole was not pleased. Rather, she began to warn her sister to stay away from city boys. Ifunanya, Ifunanya, how many times did I call you? Hmm. For me, I would advise you to stay away from city boys because they will get you pregnant and leave you to suffer alone. But Ifunanya was already deeply in love and she wouldn't listen to her sister's warning. Rather, she began to go to the stream every day as an excuse to just see Frank. One beautiful morning, Ifunanya had gone to the stream but did not see Frank. She waited, but he never showed up that day. She went home disappointed. She couldn't sleep the whole night. She was worried about her mysterious lover. The very next day, Ifunanya left for the stream in a hurry, hoping and expecting to see Frank. Luckily for her, Frank was there waiting for her. Out of joy and overwhelming feelings, she hugged Frank. Ifunanya asked Frank where he went to, leaving her all alone. Frank apologized and told Ifunanya that he was getting a work invite for her. He handed a piece of paper to Ifunanya and he told her, This work invite will make you lots of money during the holiday period so that you can continue your education in the university. Make sure you come tomorrow to the stream with your twin sister so that we can make more money. This is so much money to be made in the city. But do not tell anyone about it or that I was the one who gave you a work invite. Do you hear me? Yes. I won't tell anybody. I promise. Ifunaya went back with the piece of paper and showed it to her sister. Okoli was smart and she noticed that the job invite was not real. She told Ifunanya, Be very careful. This work invite is fake. Because here in our country, no one is going to pay you 50,000 naira for just three hours of labor. My sister, use your head. You have to be smart. You see this job invite? It is pure fake. Daluchi, their mother, had when they were discussing and warned Ifunanya not to go, telling her it was a fake work invite. All through the night, Ifunanya couldn't sleep. She kept contemplating on whether to believe the boy she loved or to believe her mother and sister. She kept thinking until she slept off. The next day, Ifunanya left for the stream but unfortunately for her, she never came back home as usual. 
Her mother and her sister became so worried. They searched for Ifunanya everywhere in the village, but they couldn't find her. Daluchi became restless and she asked Uncle Lee who had given Ifunanya the work invite. But Uncle Lee said Ifunanya did not tell her. They searched everywhere in tears, but no one knew about the whereabouts of Ifunanya. On the fifth day, someone came calling Daluchi saying that Ifunanya was at the market square. Daluchi left with Nkoli in a hurry to the market square. When they got there, Ifunaya was looking very dirty, tattered and unkept. She behaved as someone who had just lost her sanity. Daluchi and Nkoli cried their eyes out as they carried Ifunanya back to the house. But on their way back to the house, Daluchi stumbled on a stone and fell. She couldn't walk anymore. People helped and carried her back to their house. Nkoli, on seeing the state of her mother, rushed to go and call the village doctor. The doctor, on reaching their house, examined her mother and said to her, I'm sorry, my dear, but your mother has just developed a partial stroke. Nkoli, on hearing this from the village doctor, became so devastated and she began to weep. She was left all alone with her sick mother and her only sister who was suffering in pains from the injury she had sustained. That same day, towards evening, if Nanya, who had been weak and had been nursing the pain inflicted on her, couldn't endure the pain any longer, she called on Ukoli softly, Nkoli, please avenge me for what this kidnappers has done to me. Do not let them get away with it. Nkoli promised Ifunanya she will avenge her. But if Unanya died before Unkoli could ask her what really happened, Unkoli was in so much tears, losing her only twin sister to the hands of death. After the death of her sister, she called one of her uncles, Mr. Richard, who lived in the city. Mr. Richard was her mother's brother and he was very wealthy and lived in the city. When Mr. Richard came back to the village, he made sure Ifunaya was buried properly. Although he hasn't been on good terms with his sister Daluchi for years, he apologized to her and asked her to follow him to the city. Daluchi was hot because she never wanted to go to Mr. Richard's house because of the way his wife had maltreated her in the past and lied against her. Now she had been left choiceless because of what had befallen her. Mr. Richard took Daluchi and Uncle to the city with him after promising never to leave her all alone again. Chinene, Mr. Richard's wife, didn't like Daluchi. She was the one who had lied against Daluchi and made her husband not to talk to his sister for more than three years. She was angry at her husband for bringing Daluchi home to stay with them. Mr. Richard warned Chinene not to do anything that would hurt his sister who is battling with stroke. But Chinene didn't pay attention to the warnings of her husband and she started mistreating Daluchi and her daughter Nkoli. She threatened to chase them out of the house if they told Mr. Richard how she mistreated them. One night, while Nkoli was sleeping, she had a dream. And in her dream, she heard someone calling her name. Nkoli. 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 She stood up and she saw Ifunaya, her sister, standing by the side of her room. She rushed to hug Ifunaya, but she couldn't. She began to shed tears and asked Ifunanya what happened to her and why she left her alone in this world. 
Ifunaya told her sister that she never planned to leave them. She began to narrate how everything happened. I never planned on going with Frank. Frank had given me something to drink and it made me not know what I was doing. With the help of another boy, Frank kidnapped me. And when I realized myself, I was inside a dark building with my hands and legs tied up. I saw other people who were tied too. Frank and his friend took me to a room and left me there for some guys. Those guys beat me brutally. Later we were being sold one after the other. Days later, I was sold with some other people. We arrived at another unknown location and when it was my turn to be sacrificed, they gave me some substance to drink. It was the substance that made me lose my sanity. One of the guys who was kidnapped with us helped me escape in exchange for his life. That was how I came to the village market square. That's why I asked you to avenge me. You must avenge my death. Yes, sister. I will avenge your death. Okoli was pained by what her sister had to go through. She promised her sister again in tears that she was going to avenge her death. But before she could ask Efunanya what Frank or his friend looked like, Chinenye, her uncle's wife, came knocking at the door and woke her up. Her uncle's wife continued to mistreat Nkoli and her mother. One day, while Nkoli was feeding her mother so she could take her drugs, Chine called Nkoli to leave what she was doing and go wash the plates in the kitchen. Nkoli tried to explain to Chine that she was feeding her mother. Chine slapped her and tears rolled down her cheeks. As a result of this, her mother Daluchi became angry and could not control herself. She tried to step down from the bed in order to defend her daughter, but she fell on the floor and cried out in pain. Nkoli could not take it anymore. Her mother had a stroke and was crying every day, which could end up killing her. She summoned courage and reported to her uncle. Mr. Richard, on hearing all that was happening, decided he was going to rent another place for his sister without letting his wife know. Few months later, after Mr. Richard had rented an apartment for his sister and calling her daughter, she began to respond to treatment. Mr. Richard promised to start her a business and enroll Uncle into a school. Uncle and her mother were very grateful and very excited. But few days after, Mr. Richard got involved in a ghastly motor accident and was rushed to the hospital. When Daluchi heard of it, she quickly rushed to the hospital to see her brother. Chine was surprised to see Daluchi. She then realized that her husband had rented them an apartment in the city, which means that he lied to her about taking them back to the village. Chine blamed Daluchi for her husband's accident and picked up a verbal fight with her. Mr. Richard called them both, but they wouldn't hear him out. He tried standing from his bed. He slipped and fell down. The doctor came in and it was discovered that Mr. Richard had lost his life. Chine cried out her eyes out, including Daluchi, who had lost her only brother. Life became very difficult for Daluchi and her daughter Nkole after the burial of Mr. Richard. Daluchi took all the money she had been saving from the money Mr. Richard gave her for food and drugs to start a business. She made local food. She would go out every day with Nkole, hawking it around just to put food on their table and pay their bills. After a while, Daluchi couldn't continue hawking things around because her legs were beginning to pain her. She couldn't buy her drugs anymore because of how expensive they were. Nkole started hawking around alone while her mother stayed at home to make the food that they sold. One day, 
as Nkoli was hawking food along the busy road, someone called Nkoli from inside the car. He was a young and handsome man, and he introduced himself as Timothy and asked Nkoli her name. She answered politely. He bought all the food Nkoli was carrying. Nkoli thanked him and went home happily. She informed her mother about the nice young man. Daluchi told her to be careful about the boy so that what happened to her sister wouldn't repeat itself. Two days later, Nkoli had gone out to sell as usual. She sat on a spot reflecting on her life and that of her dead swain, who hadn't appeared to her in a long time. She was lost deeply in thought when all of a sudden someone called her, and it was Timothy. He bought all the food she was selling and shared it to those around. He told Nkoli to take him to her mom. Nkoli accepted, but Nkoli suggested they go on foot because she didn't trust Timothy yet, not after what her sister had gone through. As the days passed, Nkoli fell in love with Timothy. Weeks later, Nkoli discovered that she had gotten pregnant for Timothy. She asked Timothy to come and marry her before her mother would find out. Timothy told Nkoli that he would be taking her to see his own mother the next day. That night, Ifenaya appeared to Nkoli and described to her what Frank, the guy who had kidnapped her, looked like. He told her that Frank had a black scar on his forehead and also had a gap in between the down roll of his teeth. She warned her sister to be very careful of the people who are coming close to her. The next day, when Uncle got to Timothy's house, Timothy introduced her to his mother. But Uncle noticed that the lady Timothy introduced as his mother was looking young. Someone walked in and Timothy introduced him as his brother, Obina. Obina matched the description of the person whom her sister's ghost had described for her. He had a black bed scar on his forehead and also had a gap on the lower roll of his teeth. Nkoli's heart started pounding in fear. She said to herself, If Obina is Frank who had killed my sister, it only means that I am carrying the child of the brother of the one who killed my sister. Nkoli was so uneasy. She asked Timothy to take her back home. When Nkoli got home, she started crying. She cried till she fell asleep. As she was sleeping, she had another dream. In her dream, her sister Ifnanya appeared to her again. Nkoli began to ask her sister lots of questions. Dear sister, I am so heartbroken. I feel so empty and scared. I saw someone who looks like Frank. Is Obina the same guy as Frank? Yes, he is Frank. Timothy is not Frank's brother, but his friend who helped him to kidnap me. Dear sister, you must be strong and brave. I will not appear to you again since you have discovered who Frank is. It is now left for you to avenge my death as you have promised. This will be the last time I will appear to you. Take care, my sister. Nkole cried in pain, knowing she was carrying the child of Timothy. Nkole was about to ask another question when Ifunaya disappeared. When Nkole woke up, she decided she was going to risk her life to avenge the death of her only sister. The next morning, Nkole asked for money from Timothy and he sent it to her. She contacted a military officer and gave him information regarding Obina and Timothy and reported them as kidnappers. Nkole called Timothy again, saying she wanted to see his mother the next day, and Timothy agreed. All through the night, Nkole cried her eyes out as she thought about the dangerous game she was about to play. She took out a piece of paper and wrote some things down. 
she slept off in tears. Timothy came and carried Uncle in his car the next day to go see his mother. When they got to his house, Timothy was sitting with Uncle when Obina walked in. He greeted Uncle and then asked Timothy to come so that he can see him privately. When they left, Uncle began searching around to see evidence which she can use to send Timothy and Obina to prison. Uncle entered a room and saw a group of young girls sitting helplessly on the floor. She turned back and someone walked in on her. It was Obina. Nkole's heart began to beat faster. She was angry with Obina and still scared. But she ran towards him and began to fight him. Obina pushed Nkole away and she hit her stomach on a sharp edge. Timothy came in and was angry with Obina because of what he did. The woman who Timothy introduced as his mother was one of the kidnappers. She checked Nkole and realized she had miscarried the baby. They had needed the baby Nkole was carrying for money. They decided it was best to kill Nkole since she had found out their secret. Obina suggested it was best to take out her organs and sell them for money. When Timothy came to tell Nkole their decision, Nkole asked him why they chose her. Timothy told Nkole, that she had seen her selling and thought it was Efunanya. But when he called her and she didn't recognize him, he confirmed it must be the twin Efunanya talked about. So he decided to use her as a baby-making factory. Nkoli was pained on hearing what Timothy said and she tried to fight him too. Timothy slapped her heavily and she fainted on the spot. Back at home, Daluchi went to take her drugs as Nkoli had instructed her. She found a piece of paper on the table. She read what Nkoli had written about everything and how she had gone to risk her life to avenge her sister's death. And tears rolled down the cheeks of Daluchi. Nkoli warned her not to call anyone except the phone number of the military officer she wrote below the letter. Nkoli instructed that the money that was under the locker should be given to the military man. This was the money she had collected from Timothy. When the military man came with his crew, Daluchi gave them the address of the place as instructed on the letter. And on the address, it was boldly written, wait for the signal. Daluchi wanted to go with them, but they stopped her. Back at Timothy's house, they were about to cut open Nkole when the light started blinking. Timothy got scared, thinking it was the ghost of Ifunaya. After a while, the lights went off. The military officer took that as a signal and came in with his men. They arrested everyone in the building and no one escaped. They saved the young girls together with Nkole who was taken to the hospital. The military officer commended Nkole for a great job. It turned out that Timothy and his crew were on their blacklist for a long time. They go from city to city changing their names and kidnapping young boys and girls who were still naive. Someone came to visit Nkole at the hospital. It was one of the girls who she had saved. She came with her father and wanted to thank Nkoli specially for saving the life of his daughter. The man, who was a multi-millionaire, introduced himself as David. He took Nkoli in to stay with him and his only daughter. Frank and Timothy and their entire crew were sentenced to death by firing squads. Chinene, who was Nkoli's uncle's wife, lost all her husband's properties to the hands of her greedy lawyers and his friend. She went to stay at the village. Daluchi, on seeing the condition of her brother's wife, took pity on her and told Mr. David about her late brother and his wife, Chinene. David brought Chinene back to the city and started a business for her. As time went on, 
Daluchi and David fell in love. After a few months of cutting, they got married. Nkoli and David's daughter Angel were both in the university and their parents were expecting a baby. The once sorrowful life of Nkoli and her mother Daluchi changed for the best. They became wealthy and reputable people and they lived in peace ever after. The moral lesson of this story is for you as a parent to know your child's friends. Don't be a stranger to your teenager's social circle. Get acquainted with their friends, their hangouts, their online activities. Open communication is key. Create a safe space where they can confide in you without fear or judgment. Pay attention to their emotional and physical well-being. Be present in their lives. Offer genuine guidance and show them interest in their day-to-day -day activities. A neglected child is more vulnerable to seeking validation and acceptance outside the family, and they are potential to fall in prey to manipulative influences. Remember, a little love, attention, and open communication can go a long way in safeguarding your children from harm. Be their confidant, their protector, and their guide. Let the story of Onkali and Ifunanya be a call to action, a reminder to build strong, trusting relationships with your children, keeping them safe from evil.